Welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So today we got a um, um, little help video for my buddy back in New Hampshire, uh, Mitch Rosen. And um, if you've never heard of Mitch Rosen, uh, look him up on the web. Um, he does extraordinary gun leather. So uh, he makes holsters and uh, magazine cases and all kinds of leather stuff related to uh, uh, firearms. And he's the guy that made the little uh, uh, flashlight and um, Leatherman holsters for me um, and several other things. Anyway, um, Mitch has a welding problem tonight and uh, what he's trying to do is he has some stainless steel rod that he has uh, wants to attach some brass strip to, and that'd be 360 brass strip. So, um, I think I suggested using silicon bronze to him, and uh, he's trying it out, and he had a little bit of trouble, so he asked me some questions. So, I thought this might be a good opportunity to try some of this uh, fancy pants uh, through the auto darkening welding hood uh, um, filming. So we're going to try that over there and we're going to see if we can help Mitch out and show him, uh, well, hopefully he'll see something uh, that, uh, that helps him in the, uh, in the video uh, of the welding. Um, it's, kind of a, it's kind of a tricky joint, uh, brass to stainless steel. Um, there's zinc in the, in the brass that wants to vaporize, so you have to stay below a um, a temperature that, that the zinc vaporizes. Um, so Mitch, next time you want to do something like that, uh, get some, uh, some bronze flat bar as opposed to brass flat bar. Uh, unless, you know, you got to have that yellowy uh, brass color. Um, so this piece that Mitch is working on is, uh, is an art project. So uh, um, there are no particular uh, dimensional requirements. Uh, he's looking for a particular look. So. Uh, Anyway, let's uh, let's get an apron on. Um, I fiddled around with the hood over there and kind of got a uh, um, <laughs> rinky-dink little little bozo mount uh, to kind of hold it in front of the camera, and I think it's going to work. So I did a couple little test shots, and I think it's going to be good. So let's uh, let's pop over there and uh, get a hood on, and uh, let's uh, do some welding. Okay, so I got. I don't have much uh, stainless rod around here. I have a little piece here. Um, this is about, I don't know, 38 millimeter, inch and a quarter, inch and three eighths. Um, and then I have some 360 brass um, square. And it's about 10 millimeter square, about three eighths square. So what I thought we'd do is uh, we'll just do a weld kind of like that, uh, maybe a couple of them and uh, see how it goes. Um, with this silicon bronze rod here, okay. Um, so now I'm gonna I'm gonna try some um, Jody tricks. Uh, Jody uh, uh, Welding Tips and Tricks dot com. I got this auto darkening uh, welding hood that uh, a viewer sent me from Australia. And um, sorry, I can't quite remember your name. Uh, maybe uh, I'll, I'll I'll try looking it up. Anyway, uh, so we're going to try to do some through the, uh, through the hood shots and see if we can see weld puddles and, uh, and that kind of stuff. And uh, so let me, uh, I'm going to go over to the belt sander and deburr these and, uh, and clean them a little bit. And then uh, we'll kind of set these up like this. And then I'll, I'll do a weld where we join the stainless to the 360 brass using um, the silicon bronze filler rod and TIG welding. Okay, so here's our joint. Um, we're going to do a little fillet weld in between there and with the silicon bronze rod. So the trick here is to not vaporize the brass or the zinc in the brass in particular. So we're going to be washing from basically from the stainless over to the brass. So we'll get it to, to wet to the stainless and then we'll, using the arc kind of push it over and you'll see that when we when we do the welding. Um, so let me fire this thing up and uh, let's uh, let's run a little weld there. Okay, 
Okay, so you saw it jumped across there, but it's a fine line where it wants to vaporize. And I don't know if you can hear it, but it's hissing and popping at me. So I got it turned around now, and this is the opposite side of that first joint. We're gonna we're gonna do a little bit on this side and uh, see how that goes. So I don't know how you see that crud on the end of the rod there. That's vaporized zinc uh, on there. So. so you guys can see the uh, uh, the amperage I'm using for this type of joint and uh, I think that'll be it. Okay, so um, that kind of concludes this little uh, quick test here. Um, now, this is going to behave different than, uh, the, than the parts Mitch is working on. Um, his the stainless, there's a lot more mass, and in particular, the brass, there's a lot more mass. So, he'll probably have to use more than the 80 or 100 amps of current that I was using here. Um, since these are small pieces here, they tend to heat up real quickly, so um, you need less current to, uh, to do, the, to do the, uh, the weld. Now, technically, this is kind of a braze joint, um, uh, since we're really not particularly bringing the base materials uh, to a molten state. Although you do form a small puddle um, at times when the amperage is up. So it's right kind of on the cusp of welding and, um, and brazing. Um, so anyway, just that information. Anyway, uh, it, it works. Um, it, you know, this vaporized zinc is not particularly good to breed, so you're gonna wanna, um, what I do is, uh, uh, and I got it turned off right now. Is I have a fan and I put the fan under the table so it blows at my legs and, and at me. So anything that kind of comes up, there's a, there's a draft that's going away from me. So uh, um, anyway, I got a little fan over there. So uh, just a good idea to blow those fumes out of your, out of your breathing path. Um, I don't know, what else can I say about this? Um, Mitch, um, I saw the pictures you sent, and that's a pretty cool uh, art piece you're working on there. And uh, so uh, you're not going to need a lot of weld, and uh, just get into the gaps so that you don't have to heat the the brass very much, you know. And um, and put a lot of rod in there. Don't be shy with the rod. And when you get a when you get a blob in there, put the arc on it, and move the arc around, and uh, and try to get the the thing to wet properly. So. That's about all the, uh, the, the great long distance advice I can offer uh, uh, seeing what you're trying to do there. So, uh, um, all right, thanks for watching guys and good luck, Mitch.